success in oet exams on april 9th anush and anjalami for healing of marshall for mother mary's intention for good health of amy xavier for the soul of antonio porera 9th death anniversary soul of fernandez family and for all souls in purgatory the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to my and to, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have made this sin in my thoughts and my words, in, words, in what I have done, done and, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most serious fault. Therefore, I ask this Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Pray. 
by your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do not perceive it. In the desert I make a way, in the wasteland rivers. Wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches. For I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might announce my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us, we are filled with joy. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they come back rejoicing, carrying their sheep. The Lord has done great things for us, we are filled with joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being confirmed to his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, 
but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it. Since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus, brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead. I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Return to me with your whole heart, for I am gracious and merciful. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Are ready from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charges to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, let the one who among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went always one by one. They went away one by one, beginning with others. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. By the verse of the Lord, by the way, allow sin. Dear brothers and sisters, uh, perhaps there could be only one troubling question. In what sort of God do you believe? Who is God for you? And we see in gospel always this tension is there. The God of Jesus and the God of Pharisees. And these are the people who believe in a God of condemnation and judgment. And Jesus is trying to untie that yoke. And who is God? A weight upon man's head. A yoke on man's shoulder. God is such a heavy thing. But God is not that, much, that heavy thing. And Jesus is trying to rename that God. And always this tension is mounting up. The God of Jesus and the God of the people, and the Pharisees, the God of the people who believe in the laws. And Jesus will try to install the another God, the God of love. And this God is not interested in judging anyone. Rather, he is want to rebuild everyone. 
And in Spinoza, Spinoza is one of the greatest thinkers ever born. Spinoza said something uh, which is very applicable here. He said, everyone that looks from the perspective of eternity is eternal. From which perspective you view things, from which perspective you understand things, is it from the perspective of a narrow mindness? Or rather, do you have an expanded view of looking at things? And everything that looks from the perspective of eternity is eternal. And Jesus is eternal. And Jesus is alive even today. Why? Because he looks things from another perspective. You can always view things from another perspective. Then you will escape from all sorts of binaries. We live in binaries. Now we have, why do you make judgments? Because you are in the perspective of binaries. What are the binaries? We all have these problems of binaries. Man and woman, and uh, sin and good, and evil, and all sorts of binaries we, we make. Every day we make these binaries. And that's why always a woman is caught in adultery. And men is always in another position. He cannot be caught in adultery. And Jesus would say that this is a wrong way of understanding. Your judgment is, is upon you. Look from another way of seeing things. And Jesus is, that's why he refuses to believe in sin. Because sin doesn't exist actually. Evil actually doesn't exist. Only good exists. After, after creating everything, God said it is good. After everything, this material world. And what we even, we have this division of material and spiritual. Actually, even that is wrong. Because after creating this material world, God said it is good. It is actually part of goodness. And we make it bad. And the, the, the evil is something that we project upon things. And actually it doesn't exist. And Jesus wants to remove this, uh, this groundless upon which everything is built. That is evil. And Jesus wants to say, there is no evil. There is no sin. Don't believe in other sin. Sin is something we must untie and get into freedom. There exists only the freedom is there. And God created us and where in on the which side you are. And the Pharisees, everywhere they see death. They want to stone someone to death. Their whole interest is, is to disperse or distribute death among people. But Jesus wants to say that no, there must be life, life in its fullness. Everything that does not allow you to live life in its fullness must be avoided. This is your judgment. And God is not according to your judgment. God is beyond that. God is eternal. And he looks everything from the perspective of eternity. And you look things from the uh, perspective of momentousness. Get out of it. And this is a gospel passage which Jesus is, it is a very beautiful passage. How brilliant Jesus is. When you say, those who have not committed sin among you, let let stone her. And who is there who has not ever sinned? And this is to look into your own self. Don't judge others, judge yourself. And if you can judge someone, it is yourself. There is nobody else. And the perspective must be removed. That's why I would say that Jesus came to give us a new way of looking at things, a profound way of approaching things. There exists only profoundness. Everything that is narrow-minded must be removed. Get into the freedom of God. And God exists as goodness, as freedom, as beauty. Not as, no, God is not the God of death. He is God of life. See life in others, others. And when you judge others, where are you? You are on the side of judgment. You are on the side of death. And this gospel is probing us. This gospel is putting a lot of questions for us. 
And we are the people who are always involved in judging others. We find pleasure in judging others because we also find pleasure in death. Freud would say we all have this death drive because we came from a sort of uh, death and we want to distribute death among others. Death drive is there. And that's why we are caught in this kind of this kind of game. But Jesus stands before us, providing us a profound way of life. We can always have a better life in Jesus. Always, every day, every year, you can see that I can have another way, a more profound way of living in Jesus. Thank you. I believe in God. Father of the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Heavenly Father is perfect in His compassion and mercy. Let us pray for an outpouring of that mercy on the world today. Let our response be, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For Pope Francis, Bishop Paul Hinder, our Apostolic Administrator, Bishops, Priests, Religious, and Laity, that they may, with open and humble hearts, and welcome all those who approach the Sacrament of Reconciliation, that they may truly experience God's mercy through His ministers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For lawyers, judges, leaders of nations, and those entrusted with enforcing the law, that they may work towards building a world of justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For these are Christian community, that we may pray rather than condemn those who are living in sin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For each one of us, that we may endure to do away with all forms of evil in this holy time of Lent. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For those who have died, for all those infected, for the entire dedicated medical staff, and for the halting of the coronavirus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Father in heaven, we thank you for your abundant mercy shown to us. May we always be witness to the dignity and respect of to each and every person and be ever ready to forgive and forget. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
and my brethren that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for the good and for the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and every word to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may also deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Creator, rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather your people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to his setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh, Father, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, brought the bread, and gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that he heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Father, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul Hinder, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, his spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who are pleased to you throughout the ages, we may become the inheritors of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, our God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. On Wednesday, April 6, at 6.30 p.m., the Chrism Concelebrated Mass will be celebrated by the Apostolic Nuncio, our Apostolic Administrator, and Monsignors, and the Priest of the Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, and other guest priests. The faithful are invited to attend. The Congeny London Retreat will be on April 4th, 5th, 7th, and 8th. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at the Holy Family Hall from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. It will be conducted by Reverend Father Kiran Monis OFM Camp. The silent Holy Hour adoration will be on the first Thursday, 7th April from 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. The Mass will start after that. And on April 3rd, Sunday, after the 6 p.m. English Mass, the English lectures will be lead, will lead the stations of the cross in the courtyard. All are invited to join. Our parish is having a charity fund drive starting today, April 1st to April 3rd, in support of the needy children in Ukraine. There are boxes situated in the main and back gates where you can drop your donations. Only cash contributions will be accepted at this time. Pray for the sinner. We, we stand, stand before you, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life, and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The mass is ended. Thanks be to God.